You've probably heard the popular saying, once taught, twice learned, to describe the idea that when we teach other people, we reinforce our own learning. But what you might not know is that this idea is not only supported by neuroscience, it's also been used and advocated for by some of history's most intelligent and gifted minds. The idea that teaching other people helps us learn has been attributed to many, many people throughout history, all the way back to the Roman philosopher and Stoic Seneca, who said, docendo decimus, or by teaching we learn. In the modern era, neuroscientists and researchers have sought to understand exactly how this effect works and how we can harness it to our own learning advantage. Studies have focused on firstborn children, student teachers, and even middle school students in computer teaching simulations to understand the observable increases in learning and IQ caused by the act of teaching, and the results have been surprising. When we teach other people information, we gain a great deal of benefits. For one, when we decide that we will teach a subject that we are currently learning, we are immediately motivated to improve our own understanding, both to be able to serve another person and, of course, to avoid embarrassing ourselves in the process. But far beyond that, teaching a subject to someone who knows less than us presents us with a unique set of challenges and opportunities for us as learners. Because other people have different learning styles and curiosities and levels of understanding than we do, teaching them requires us to take a more thorough and comprehensive approach in our own learning. In a sense, we are forced to think of new and alternative ways to understand a subject and of simpler, more creative ways to transmit that understanding to another human being. This process of attempting to simplify a subject well enough to explain it results in a much deeper understanding for us. After all, as Albert Einstein, one of the most accomplished physicists of all time and a professor at Princeton University, once said on the topic of teaching, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Furthermore, when we teach other people, we are often presented with unique questions that are far outside our own scope of focus, but are nonetheless crucial and important to our own understanding. You know, recently I was sitting down with a few friends who had developed an interest in blockchain technology, which is something that I've been spending the last six months or so studying very intensively. And after a few minutes of me simplifying and explaining the inner workings of this new technology itself, my friend asked me a very, very specific question that I not only didn't know the answer to, I'd actually never even thought about that aspect of how the technology works. Now, this question and a few more like it showed me the great, great benefit of teaching. The people we teach help us understand what we do and do not know. In essence, you can think of teaching sort of like having other people check your work. As you share the information that you've acquired, you effectively recruit other people to look for holes in your knowledge and alert you to the areas that you should go back and study further. Best of all, they do this in a much more friendly way than a teacher grading your exam and they do it completely for free. Personally, as someone who has been teaching online full-time for years at this point, I've come to realize just what a powerful tool it is to have thousands and thousands of people actually highlight the areas that I don't fully understand or haven't fully considered. Every single time that someone asks me a question in one of my courses, I'm prompted to ask myself, if I understand the subcategory well enough to then explain it to them. And if I don't, I immediately am motivated to go out there and do the research and learn about it myself. Heck, until someone asked me about the effects of teaching and learning, I had never even thought to check out the scientific research or the origins of this learning power tool. And now I know about these things well enough to teach you. So, 
Teaching is such an effective way for reinforcing learning that today I'll often build an entire course solely because I want to learn more about the topic myself. By teaching other people, I'm motivated to partner up with other experts, download as much of their knowledge as I possibly can, and research whatever else I want to know about. And I can help folks like yourself in the process. Indeed, after mnemonic techniques and speed reading, I would say that teaching has probably been the most powerful learning hack that I've used for learning everything from Bitcoin to acro yoga, and that's why you'll find me doing it constantly. But as I found out, this technique has been used by many other great teachers before I was even born, and you don't have to get in front of a camera to use it. In fact, one of the most notable supporters of this strategy was Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist Richard Feynman, who throughout his career taught at Cornell, Caltech, and even advocated for alternative teaching methods at the California State Curriculum Commission and the National Science Teachers Association. To this day, Feynman is known for his four-step model of learning through teaching, which goes like this. Pick a topic you want to understand and start studying it. Write down everything that you know about the topic on a notebook page, using illustrations wherever possible to simplify the understanding and portrayal of the subject. Now add to that page every time you learn something new about it. Two, pretend to teach your topic to a classroom, even if you're not actually going to do it. Make sure that you're able to explain the topic in simple, simple terms. Three, go back to the books when you get stuck. The gaps in your knowledge should be obvious by attempting to teach it. Revisit the problem areas until you explain the topic fully. And four, simplify and use analogies. Repeat the process while simplifying your language and connecting facts with analogies and graphics to help you strengthen your understanding. If you consider the fact that Richard Feynman was a Nobel Prize winning thought leader in one of the most complex subjects known to man, astrophysics, it is pretty impressive that this was the process that he used to learn. It's also quite interesting that he, like Einstein, emphasized the importance of simplifying knowledge well enough to actually be able to explain it to others. One of the best things that you can do to reinforce everything that you've learned here about memory and neuroscience is to get out there and teach it to others. All right, super friends, that is all for this week's video. If you guys would like to learn more about accelerated learning, speed reading, memory, or any of that good stuff, well, do take a moment to check out a completely free trial of my Super Learner Masterclass. You can just hit the link below, no credit card required. Also, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys next week.